What will people in Toronto do before the G20? This is a shot of Welcome to Pittsburgh from last year with a whole bunch of armed troops, supposedly 10,000 in our city. Um, so what will we do before then? Hi, uh, it's been reported that up to 1,000 private security officers are also going to be partaking in this uh, security at the G20. Um, so my question is, is um, do these private security, will they have the same powers that police have? And then also, uh, how do we hold uh, private security members accountable, say, an abuse of power situation arises? I can't really disclose um, police strength and other people that are being utilized, but I can tell you this. Police officers, again, like internationally protected people, are a very crystal clear designation in law in this country, and only they have the special powers and authority to do things, and private security don't have those powers. And if they are utilized, they have been used at the Olympics and that, they're being very uh, different roles in the actual police roles, and they'll be, they'll be held accountable. Can you discuss um, kind of what level the private security will be used? Is it just more? Unfortunately, no, I can't. I see. Okay, thank you very much. You're the, welcome. The news report to which you're speaking, I think, was it was posted on the federal government website as a procurement uh, for a contract yes. for services, and I think it spoke to 1,300 security guards that would be pr primarily doing wanding duties. Uh, that's the public disclosure based on the, the, the contract that was being let. That's the extent of the information that we have. It, it, uh, it, and, and beyond that, um, it's, you're not going to get details like that out of this, a forum like this. Right. Thank you. But I think that it's clear that policing uh, duties will be only done by police officers, and they will be their sworn officers. Also, the diplomatic community being given to huge entourages and more on this. You can see more details at torontotruthseekers.com as we ramp up efforts to deal with the, uh, the G20 summit coming here in just about two months. Question. Um, my sister goes to daycare here. Is it going to be okay for her to pass the fences, like, safe? Okay. First off, young lady, thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, you'll be able to get into, into your um, daycare here, and your mom and dad will be able to come in and get you, too. And... Do you like the Royal Canadian Mountain Police and the horses and that? There'll be so many of them around, you can hold hands in and out to your daycare, okay? That's my promise to you. And the first time I was in this park was 1968, being trampled by RCMP horses, and I had two small kids with me, objecting to Vietnam. The problem will arise beginning on the Thursday, uh, roughly the because th the G8 summit in Huntsville, that's the Friday, Saturday, and the G20 is a Saturday, Sunday. And what happens when these people, the internationally protected people, the dignitaries come to town is, of course, they have to be moved around and transported in what are called motorcades. And these motorcades, even though they're constantly moving, they still result in temporary shutdowns of roads. It's like the TTC, which will be impacted. They won't be shut down, but they will be having delays in their services. We need security passes or we don't. There's a traffic zone okay. right now that is being from King Street down to the lake. Okay. from Spadina to Young. Okay. That is just a traffic congestion zone, so right. say. And smaller, much smaller than that, contained in that traffic okay. zone, yeah. think around the Metro Toronto Convention Centre where the summit is, yeah. will be the perimeters of the fences. That we won't disclose until sometime around the start of June. A zone outside of the fence you're not allowed to stand in, that kind of thing? As I said, you can pass through the fence line. Like I said, if you have a purpose, you're going to be asked by police. If you're peaceably demonstrating mm -hmm. and sending a message, that's your God-given right in this country, and I respect that. But not disclosing their identity. Quite simply, if you want to disguise your face, you're absolutely right. You can do it. However, just be aware of the fact that if you engage in criminal activity, there's a second and separate criminal offense for wearing a disguise while committing an offense, and it's very serious. Knock on wood, if there's a security issue, these gates will close. So my question to you is, what is the plan if these gates close and I happen to be inside the gate? Well, as I said at our last meeting, you're going to be one of the safest people in Toronto. However, we but don't... I'm inside we, the gate. That's right. Inside. You're in with us. What are your thoughts on this uh, G20? And what, what's Press for Truth been doing about the G20? Well, we're going, to be doing, we're going to be doing some exclusive coverage. I want to tell everybody out there to stay tuned to pressfortruth.ca for exclusive coverage of the G20. I was astounded, disgusted, and really naive until I found the reality how aggressive and how many problems the priests actually caused these events. Somebody at NAUResistance.org, uh, they do excellent work over there, uh, and he sent me a message uh, the Saturday night and said, Dan, I heard there's going to be a terrorism drill and a uh, civilian evacuation uh, drill going on at the Commerce Court downtown Toronto. 
So of course, you know, we were we were all over it. Uh, we went there and managed to catch actual footage of the drill going on. After you show some a bit of uh, what this drill was, uh, there's also a bit of an interview, uh, sort of a press conference style, and he's talking about a TAPS program. Uh, were you at all surprised that, uh, th that this is going on in the Toronto Police Service? Absolutely. I hadn't heard of that one yet, and it's funny that the first time I heard about it was coming from them, but it's TAPS, T-A-P-P-S, the Toronto Association of Police and Private Security. Uh, so they constantly told us, you know, what we do at TAPS is we work closely with the private sector. And what we tried to make the point in the video is that the merging of the private and public sector is a very, very dangerous and slippery slope and it's somewhere, somewhere where we don't want to go. The stress and the psychological effects of having uh, armed police um, at, the, uh, at these fences. They will be out here, there will be a large number of them, and yes, they will be armed. Are, they, are we to expect uh, more exceptional arms than usual? I can't be disclosing security issues, unfortunately. And in terms of the psychological impact, one of them is, is helicopters and aircraft. And I've been studying of, of Army military helicopters, Coast Guard helicopters, local, small, uh, perhaps news and and surveillance helicopters. NORAD uh, giving people the heads up that they may be hearing and seeing these planes in the air uh, today and these helicopters. And this is all uh, to prepare for the G8 and G20 summits coming up in June. There will be an army of uh, police and security personnel on the ground. And this is the other component, uh, keeping an eye on things from the sky. There has been a great deal of work since 9-11 across the different city services. And and you can see it in the Sunrise propane explosion and other events and like that. And you could send a message to the developers to clean up the construction material, because the last thing we need is overzealous demonstrators picking up plywood or things like that. Okay? That's a very good idea. All right, very thank very you. Yeah. And the city staff are nodding all of their heads. And We have to do our job, which is to protect these dignitaries and internationally protected people. And I realize that cell phones are not a secure means of communication, but there are many other devices which use those frequencies, those channels, and can tie up channels quite heavily. Well, I can assure you this, we're very well of our cell internets and that, and we're working with the people to maintain those so that they are maintained. I didn't ask about maintained. That's, question, all, that's, that's all that you're prepared to say. That's all I'm prepared to say. The other nets and that are, again, security related. And we don't uh, that was why I said it was a delicate question. It'll be going on for weeks. Uh, the city will be locked down. You know, major things happening. Uh, what, what I was going to ask you, did you learn anything recently at a uh, town hall about the G20? Yeah, I, uh, I went to a town hall meeting. And, um, you know, it was pretty big. I walked in and I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot of people. But when I, you know, knew that we had an opportunity to ask the question, I was like, I'm definitely getting up there to ask them a question. And because uh, they had the head of police, the representative of the police force who's going to be dealing with the G20. So I got up there and I said, uh, in 2007, um, there was a summit that was held in Montebello, Quebec, uh, where three Sûreté de Quebec police officers uh, were caught as agent provocateurs. Um, they were dressed as aggressive uh, protesters uh, with rocks in their hands in an attempt to incite violence. Um, George, as a representative of the Toronto Police, can you assure us that the Toronto Police Force uh, will not engage in any um, police uh, agent, uh, provocateur agent activities at the G20 Summit? What I can tell you is that the Community Relations Group is strictly there on its face to build those bridges and trust. We've reached out to protest groups and we're continuing to do so. There's two halves to the community relations group. I'm the one that reaches out to business in that. There's another half that reaches out to protest, demonstration, and rally groups. I'm trying to tell them, uh, not tell them, but advise them of what the laws are and et cetera, asking for their assistance and compliance with those. Um, other matters, security matters, I'm not at liberty to, those, to discuss those in an open format. So that to me says, you know, I'm not saying no, we're not going to engage in agent provocateur tactics. All I'm saying is I can't discuss that right now.